Uh, welcome everybody to the complimentary training video which is based on the last one and I want to give you all the information which I, I made like a statement in the previous uh, part number five but I did not explain it. So that's why I make this complimentary um, video which is based on the castellated part we were talking the last time and I will just give you the, the idea what the different settings mean. By the way, it can happen that um, different settings are already um, changed related to the last one because it's not the first time I checked out this or tried to make this video. So, okay. What we were doing the last time, we were creating uh, this mesh here on the top, but I did not give you the information what does the different parameters mean. And therefore, I just did the following now for this. Um, we have still everything the same, but I set the end cells between levels to 1, and I set the levels here, the refinement levels, to 0, 0. We are um, calling snappy hex mesh now. And by the way, if I type FC, it will just remove the zero folder. It's like RM minus F and V for verbose. And it will do actually the same. By the way, you don't have to delete this uh, one folder if you have the settings in your control file that you start from the start time, which is zero. So if you start an application, it always takes the time folder zero. And in Snappy Hex Mesh, as we don't have here any mesh inside the zero folder, it will refer to the constant pulling mesh folder. So that's why if you are calling Snappy Hex Mesh, it will directly start from the background mesh and then starting the meshing, even if you have this one folder. Okay, so I just created this mesh using the following settings and what we get is we just get one cell. Um, I will just put this to be refined surface in. So the mesh is here. We don't skip the The zero folder so that we can also check out how does our background mesh look like and it looks like this and what is snappy hex mesh actually doing now in the castellated process by the way um, castellated um, in the next mesh I will give you the the definition or what does the castellated mesh look like how how what does it represent because the last time I I mentioned it the two, three times, but I never said or explained what it is actually. So, um, yeah, when Snappy Hex Mesh does this castellated part, it is, you can see it very clearly, it is checking the cells which are intersecting between the surface um, or which are intersecting with the surface we want to mesh. And then it is um, taking our user input into account and refines these cells. As we said to Snappy X Mesh, hey, please don't refine at all, because we said Snappy X Mesh here in the level, we said we don't we don't want to refine anything. Um, Snappy X Mesh will just keep this cell. Why it is just keeping this cell, I'm not sure out of the box because I was expecting that it is taking a few more cells. However, it doesn't matter. Um, we directly go on in meshing with level one. And uh, by the way, this min and max values, I keep the um, constant or equal snap the hex mesh. So we run it again. And what will happen? Yeah, nothing special. All these cells which were intersected by the surface got refined. So Snappy Hex Mesh is splitting these cells into eight new cells. 
and you can also take it into account while you are reading the cell levels so the color will give you the hint if I give you the the numbers in another color so we have the cell levels here which is zero which represents the background mesh size and one is actually refined by the level of one so they are double as small as the original background mesh and there is no surprise if I just change it to 2-2 two, two. actually then we get here even a finer mesh as you can already see okay so as you already or if you are maybe thinking hey Toby you are just talking crap because look this cell is getting um, is taken into account for splitting so why is this cell also taken into account for splitting as we can see it here this is actually very easy to explain because we have here a quantity which is called n cells between levels which is one which would mean that we will still have one cell which is split in addition um yeah that's it so if this cell is activated, let's say, for be splitted, Snappy Hex Mesh also says, okay, one level more left and right, and we will refine this of a level of one, two. If you are saying, okay, we will now say a level of three, or, or, or n cells between levels of two, it will actually just take into account um, more cells here. So I will just reset this guy. By the way, if you are thinking, what the fuck is here? These cells are so weird. Um, you just here decompose polyhedrals and your mesh gets nice again. We will come to this thing later on. We are just remeshing with now n cells between levels of uh, two, and now we should have here the greenish one. We should have two greenish one here. Um, as you can see, we set it to one and now to two, and we had here already two, but here just one. We had here two and here just one. So this is not always um, a value which is valid everywhere. So as you can see now we had an n cells between levels 2 which would be satisfied here but not here because we have here almost um, yeah 1, 2, 3, 4 we have here 2, we have here 3 but it gives you an idea in which direction it goes. So if you set it again to 3 we get more cells as like a buffer cells in between the different levels and this is very important to know because just imagine that now you are in the next step when you are trying to push all these cells and this is basically and I was already forgetting it um, this is a castellated mesh here castellated mesh is like it reminds everybody on fine difference method it's like a stepwise profile so pure hexadrons which are going down but you cannot um, get like the the shape of your surface because you can't just use uh, pure hexadrons however um, this is just uh, the first the first part of snappy hex mesh and we don't have only hexadrons anymore okay so we are going to refresh again and you see now the cells are going more inside and we have set three but we have here four then two so it's not everywhere valid but yeah now you you have the idea what does this 
and cells between levels mean. And of course, if I do now make this maximum level to set to 3, so everything gets refined by a factor of 2 and the factor of 3 gets refined if this angle stuff is valid, the, for sharp angles. I'm not completely sure if it is like the shapes, uh, the angles of your representative geometry, where you have your surface normals, this is maybe compared to the normal vector of your um, cells phase, cell phases, yes. Um, which angle is compared, I'm not sure, but yeah. By the way, a uh, hint, if you don't have a well representative surface here, you can imagine that you have less surface angles or less faces where you have um, normal vectors which you can compare. So if you just take this pipe, this straight pipe, pipe part here into account, if you export it via a CAD software you will get very long and um, sharp triangles which might influence this. Okay, now we had uh, set the surface refinement and you can surface refinement to 3 and you can see I will just clean it up so we have here 0, level 1, level 2 and level 3 where the other stuff is valid. So far so good, I guess you, you got it and we are just going on within the next thing. What I wanted to show you is this maximum uh, global cells, we set it to 50,000, okay? So check mesh will give us 10,000 around, which is our background mesh. It's a pure hexagon mesh. Now we make snappy hex mesh, we execute it. But snappy hex mesh now is limited to 50,000 cells. We are checking again what was snappy now creating. It is this, you see, even though we didn't change anything in the uh, snappy hex mesh dictionary, we get like this refinement of three is vanished everywhere because we reached this cell limit of yeah 50,000. We now check mesh latest time. We just check out how much cells we do have. So we have 36,000 plus 1,000 are 37,000. Now you can say, what the heck? Where are the rest of these 13,000 cells? Keep in mind that this value you set here Max global cells is the overall cells before removing the non-needed section or area or volume of your mesh. Okay, and I see it's getting almost very dark here. The last one I wanted to show you is the possibility we, we can use here because our smoking pipe, so this combined STL, this consists actually of three different surfaces, which we created in Salome. We have here the inlet, we have the wall part and we have the outlet. That's why you can also say here regions. And then you can name it. So the region name is inlet. The region name is outlet. And it is wall. These three guys correspond to the file we have here in tree surface mesh combined STL. This is, as you can see here, inlet. Then we go on, we have somewhere, somewhere an end, I don't know where, we then have outlet 
and then we have hopefully the wall and this is actually let me see walls walls inlet outlet you can now make an access to them and name them inlets so these names you are setting here are now the patch names and commonly they are equal but you can name it how you would like to name it and now if you um, put these regions in first you can check snappy hex mesh if you will not get an error here right at the beginning then everything is fine I will just give you the hint if you say there is a region called name Snappy Hex Mesh will give you the information hey well you you requested a, you requested a surface name within this combined STL what the heck it's really dark here um, one moment on brightness can I doesn't matter I will not change it here and so I had technical problems <laughs> it's still dark doesn't matter so um, back to the topic so you requested a name wall but it's not inside the STL file it's only inlet outlet walls so this is um, just for your information so if you don't if you make some mistakes here you will you will get the information with a fatal error so and now the interesting thing is you can say zero zero we don't want to refine here anything but regions and now we are inlet outlet and walls we want to refine this inlet level five times please and we also can directly say patch info it's a type patch this is a patch please and the outlet level please refine it just by a level of two uh, one and the patch info will be a uh, patch two and the walls so we will make the walls by a level of two three for example and the patch info you don't have to specify this because by default it's a wall and you can also say um, um, how is it named group 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 or I don't know you can group something I have to check it out how it would name but in any case so now you can have directly access to to the single surface and you can mesh them individually and now snappy hex mesh is running with the settings you set and is now taking into account a level of five here a level of one here and the reddish one should be a minimum two and if the angle is resolved or the angles is um, valid please refine by a factor of three and now we want just to check it out we will make here a refresh and nothing changed because you know why we limited snappy hex mesh to stop at um, yeah 50,000 cells um, we uh, run now snappy hex mesh again to see what it will give us and then we are finished here hopefully you could get something out of this so my personal workflow is always that I do have these region STLs um, given like here and I I'm really using this region stuff within snappy hex mesh so that I have access to all these single surfaces 
By the way, out of the box, one thing that I want to mention, which is missing here still. So these are the names of the, the these are the names given in the STL file. And also these are the names of the STL file. Not the names you say to be later on set by Snappy Hexmesh as patch names. These three are the patch names after Snappy Hexmesh and the first one here in the top and uh, the front, these are the names within the file. So you can simply um, imagine this region and then the file, it's always related to the file. It's similar here, it's also related to the file. Okay, so Snappy Hexmesh is now uh, doing a great uh, stuff and it is working and creating our mesh. And now it is writing our mesh. You also already see, um, we have here cells refinement zero cells by refinement one refinement two three four five and you see we have 50 500 million cells already here already around this small guy uh, snappy hex mesh also takes now uh, much longer so i have to check what i did here and if i i'm talking a good thing Yes, I was wrong. I'm sorry because the inlet is this patch and the outlet is this one. I wanted to have it vice versa that the inlet part here is um, not as fine meshed. So actually I was mixing it up. So the big one and the, the small one. We will just rerun this just to give you the, the idea because I wanted to mesh this uh, part here. More. And we are ready. We will find and you see this is getting refined extremely now. Taken into account also these N cells between levels. And this part gets refined by a level of two only. We get here because these are the walls, this refinement by the, the angle. And now you see you can play around with these things um, and you can make a very nice mesh here. And that's everything for, for this complementary video. I hope this was uh, compact for you. You understand the things I was uh, I was doing, and um, there are a lot of more things um, which are interesting using Snappy Hex Mesh and um, refining, which I probably will talk about in a separate video, which is just about Snappy Hex Mesh. So far, so good. Um, I wish you everybody um, a nice evening, a good day, keep filming guys, please share my work if you like it, like it and leave a comment at the bottom. That's Toby and bye bye.